If you're an 80s kid or just wish you were, Runner might be the game for you as it puts you through a prestige anime styled world where you take control of a motorcycle weaving in and out of traffic at breakneck speeds, all while shooting and trying to get away from UAVs, hunter killer tanks, sniper quadrupeds, covert assassin vehicles, and larger than life bosses. This released October 6, 2022 for the Quest 2 and will soon to be coming to PC, though this review is based on the Quest 2. Now yes, this review is a little bit late, but it reflects the changes made in the one point one checkpoint update which drastically changed the fun factor for us in this game so this is a game that we think you might want to take another look at Hey guys, it's Chris from the VR Grid. This review was written by Ryan, but it's my sexy voice that's going to be reading this. However, before we get into that, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. Leave us a comment as it really helps us out and we like talking to you. As a relative nerd for most of my life, I have dabbled in all sorts of media with one standout being the future set anime shows from the late 80s and early 90s, which includes stuff like Ghost in the Shell and Akira, the latter of which I have to believe is the biggest inspiration for Runner. In Runner, you are just that, a mod career named Mina, who is hired to deliver a package across the colony using the thoroughfare, a massive high-speed expressway full of dangers. If you've seen Akira, the bike scenes in that are near epic and Runner looks to bring that to our headset. And I'm not going to lie, when I first saw the trailer for this, I was pretty stoked. Now the goal of each of the seven stages is simple. Get to the end without dying. Yeah, pretty simple, but there's substantially a larger story at play here with the setting taking place off Earth on a mining colony situated on a planet that doesn't spin. So one side is blazingly hot while the other is deathly cold and the population lives in the safe zone between these two sides. It's a cyberpunk setting packed full of homages and a fairly intriguing in-depth world. Though to experience the bulk of the story, we recommend you actually download the free companion app for your mobile device. What's in the game is much more stripped back, leaving the player to fill in much of the gap, save for an opening cutscene and communication with your handler and intel provided in between missions. It's unfortunate though how much is missing from the actual game, as it's very clear that the developers took the time to create this awesome world, and it would have been nice to see a little more of the story included, though what's here still gets the job done and sets the stage for your harrowing adventure. There are two modes of play available, playing the campaign on the singular difficulty or playing through the campaign unable to die, which allows those that might not have the skills or the patience to get through the seven stages and have the chance to still experience the different environments, enemies, boss battles, and story. Though your scores won't count towards the online leaderboards, achievements won't unlock, nor will new bikes. Comfort options are limited to adjusting your height relative to the bike, how much the bike leans, and when veering left or right, and adjustable blinders. Now, given that this is a fast-paced game, you might be asking, is motion sickness an issue? I would say tread carefully, though there are comfort settings for those who need it. Controlling your bike is easy enough, as whichever hand is holding the bike, or both if you're not holding a gun, will allow you to steer it left or right using the thumbsticks. Your bike has its own weapons, as do you, thanks to two pistols slaughtered in front of you. You always move at a constant pace down the freeway, though this only serves to ensure the game is always moving at a fast pace. Besides steering, you can increase or slow down your speed to accommodate the enemies you'll be facing by pressing up or down on the thumbstick. Pickups will show up on each procedurally generated stage that refills your shields, gives you grenades or missiles, modifies the secondary fire on your pistols, or can change the weapon mounted on your bike, with each option offering its own strengths and weaknesses. Now your last combat option is your sword, which can deflect or destroy incoming projectiles, with your guns being able to do the latter as well. You also collect combo energy by cruising near traffic and have the ability to grab both pistols, which triggers a slow motion mode that lets you unleash all hell on whatever you decide to shoot, at least for a few seconds or until your ammo runs out. Lastly would be those other bikes, one hidden in each stage that not just offers a new look but a different armor, speed, maneuverability or the custom abilities special to each ride. All these mechanics work wonderfully together minus the sword which I found to be more cumbersome than it was worth but this makes for an engaging and action packed road rash type racer save for only one key element, it's really freaking hard. The opening stage eased me into the various combat and bike mechanics, and it wasn't before too long I was destroying everything in my sight with relative ease, cruising along the thoroughfare, dodging traffic, collecting pickups, power-ups, and having a good old time. Then I reached the first boss, the Armored Razorback. What ensued was a quick death as it unloaded its armament at me before I even had the opportunity to learn its attack patterns. Upon death, you have two options, restart the entire stage from the beginning or select a checkpoint that spawns you close to where you died, but a costier points and leaderboard ranking. 
It's a solid system that rewards hardcores for being just that, but lets those with lesser skills still experience every stage boss and enemy, all while still letting you accrue scores and unlock bikes, though at the cost of leaderboard glory. Now looking at the visuals, I will say that the variety in the cityscapes, enemies, and the sheer speeds you travel at does make this a very exhilarating ride, and thanks to that retro art style, it all kind of feels familiar as if I'd been to this world before. That's not to say there aren't some distinctive settings to check out, with my personal standout being the water-themed level that has floating buildings pouring water down to the planet's surface. Cruising along the streets at top speeds, and they do feel incredibly fast, all while skirting traffic to get those energy boosts and shooting at police scanners so they don't hinder your progress, is nothing short of exhilarating, and I truly did feel like I was a part of a classic anime film. The enemies you face also come in a decent variety with other automated bikes trying to chase you down to much bigger vehicles like armored cars and tanks as well as flying drones ranging from some the size of a basketball to full-on assault cruisers and a few more random foes. Everything here looks sharp and crisp though, in the middle of combat it can sometimes be hard to take in your surroundings so in those rare moments between the action it's fun to take in the sights. Sound design is on point, kicked off with a wonderful retro soundtrack by Fat Bard. I have no idea who that is, but it's decent. On top of this, there's top quality voice acting thanks to a stellar cast. 3D audio is utilized here fairly well, as vehicles and bosses may attack or come at you from one side or another, with your only warning being the sounds of their gunfire engines letting you know to move out of the way or shoot those targets you didn't see. In addition, during the dead drop missions you can access intel which may provide clues for the next mission and changes up every time you play through. Unfortunately though, the voice work that was done for the mobile app for these characters is missing, leaving us with a simple image and text. In my opinion, a real missed opportunity. In conclusion guys, in many ways this feels like an arcade shooter from the 90s, but offers enough options to ensure that anyone can hop on a bike and have a good time. Each of the seven stages will take somewhere in the 15 to 25 minute range to conquer based upon your skills, giving this decent content value considering the budget asking price and some replay value if you do care about leaderboard scores or want to find those hidden bikes. With plenty of nostalgic charm, a sleek world, and breakneck speeds, it's an intense, thrilling, and challenging ride. The VR Grid gives this an 8 out of 10. And recommend this to those looking for a nice pick-up-and-play arcade experience that'll offer some quick thrills and a little bit of fun. Anyways guys, that's it for me. I'm Chris from the VR Grid, and as always, we will catch you on our next video.